It's been a while since I created an iPhone tips video, so I thought I'd keep the intro short and get right to it. Here's 10 truly useful tips and tricks for the iPhone that I bet most people don't know about. Okay, let's get into it. I'm sure you already know that if you want to remove an app from your home screen but still keep it on your phone, you just tap and hold the app tile until you see the remove app button. Then tap on it and choose remove from home screen. This takes the app off of your home screen without deleting it. And if you want to do this for multiple apps, the way that I used to do it was by repeating the process over and over for each app. But there is a much quicker way to do this. Tap and hold on an app that you want to remove from your home screen and drag it slightly. While keeping your finger or thumb pressed down on that app, tap on any other apps that you also want to remove. This will create a stack of apps. Now, still keeping your finger or thumb pressed on the stack, use another finger to swipe all the way to the right until you reach the app library. Then let go of the stack. All the apps will now be dropped into the app library, removing them from your home screen, but still keeping them on your phone as normal. If you've recently closed a Safari tab and then realized you'd like to get it back, you can do so by tapping the tab button in the bottom right, then long pressing the plus button in the bottom left. This will show you any tabs that you've recently closed, and you can simply tap on one to reopen it in a new tab. This only works for recently closed tabs though. If you want to find something that's been closed for a longer period, you'll need to check your Safari history. But if you've accidentally closed a tab just a moment ago and need to get it back quickly, this is a great tip to keep in mind. Do you ever watch these tip videos and think, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If so, you should definitely check out the brand new training portal that I've just launched, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 100 tips for the iPhone, with another 100 being added over the next few weeks, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons, and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order, or you can pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone or your tablet or your home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description of this video. You can share an article from Safari with someone else as a PDF. To do this, open the article in Safari, tap the share button at the bottom of the screen, and then tap on the options button where you can choose PDF. The only problem with this method is that you won't be able to see the PDF before you send it. Instead, you'll just see a generic PDF icon, like in the Messages app, for example. There is an alternative way to send a PDF of a Safari article, and it also lets you highlight the text before you send it. Start the same way by opening the article in Safari and tapping the share button at the bottom of the screen. This time, scroll down and tap on print. When you do this, you'll see a preview of the article appear at the bottom of the screen. You can deselect any pages that you don't want to include in the PDF. Once you're happy with the selection, use your fingers to make a zoom motion on the preview, as if you're trying to zoom in on a photo. This will open a full preview of the PDF file. In the PDF preview, you can select text with your finger and choose highlight. You'll see options to change the highlight color, underline the text, or use strike through. Once you've finished highlighting, you can send the PDF by tapping the share button in the bottom left corner and sharing it as you normally would. If you have any kind of visual impairment, there's an app on your iPhone called the Magnifier app that you should be using. You can find it by opening Spotlight Search and typing in Magnifier. Once you open the app, you'll see a slider that allows you to zoom in and out. The key difference between the Magnifier app and the regular camera app is the level of zoom that you can achieve while still keeping text clear and legible. This makes it incredibly useful for reading really small text if you struggle with it. If you use the Magnifier app regularly, I'd recommend adding it to your control center for quick access. Here's how to do it. First, open your control center, then tap the plus button in the upper left corner to enter control center edit mode. Next, tap add a control at the bottom of the screen. In the search controls box at the top, type in magnifier. You'll see it listed under two sections, capture and utilities. These are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you choose, just select one and it will be added to your control center. Now, the next time that you need quick access to the magnifier app, just swipe down to access your control center, tap the magnifier button, and you're good to go. 
If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. There's an extremely useful feature on the iPhone that almost no one I talk to seems to know about. It's called password groups. Let me give you a real life example to show you how it works. My wife and I are in the process of buying a house and we have access to an online portal where we can track the progress of the purchase. The way that it's set up, only one of us can have a login, but we both need access to the portal. Now I could just ask my wife to send me the user ID and password, but that's not ideal. It means she'd have to share sensitive information over a messaging app. Plus, if she ever changes the password, I'd only find out when I can't log in anymore, and then we'd have to go through the whole process again. A much easier way to handle this is by creating a password group that we're both members of. So here's how you do it. First, go to your iPhone and open Spotlight Search, then search for passwords and open the app. In there, you'll see an option called New Shared Group. Tap on it and you can give the group a name. For example, if it's for work, you might call it work. If it's for housemates, you might name it after your house or for a family group, just call it family. Choose whatever's relevant to you. Once you've named the group, you'll see your name listed as the owner of the group. Next, tap Add People and search for the people that you want to add to the group. Keep in mind, they'll need to be iPhone users for this to work. After selecting them, tap Add to include them in the group, then tap Create in the upper right corner to finalize it. Now you can scroll through all the passwords stored on your device and select any that you'd like to share with the group. Once you've chosen them, tap Move in the upper right corner. At this point, you'll have the option to notify the people that you've added to the group. You can do this via messages, or you can choose Not Now and let them know manually. It's up to you. The other person will need to accept the invitation to join the password group. If you sent the notification via messages, they can follow the link in the message to accept. If not, they can go to passwords on their device, tap invitations, choose view, and then accept the invitation. Once that's done, everyone in the group will have access to the shared user IDs and passwords. And the best part is if anyone changes a password in the group, it will automatically update for everyone else in the group across all their devices. You don't need to notify anyone. It just works seamlessly. You can log medications in the health app, whether it's something you take every day or just a short-term prescription that you want to remember to take. Here's how to set it up. First, open the health app and tap browse in the bottom right corner. From there, tap on medications and scroll down until you see an option to add a medication. Tap on this and give the medication a name. You can name it something simple like antibiotics or use the actual name of the medication. It's entirely up to you. Once you've entered the name, tap next. You'll then choose the medication type. The app provides common options like capsules, tablets, or liquids, but if you scroll further down, you'll see more specific forms. Select the type, tap next, and move on to the strength of the medication. If you'd like, you can input the strength here, but this step is optional, so you can tap skip if it's not relevant. Next, set the schedule for how often you'd be taking the medication. By default, it's set to every day, but if you tap change, you'll see options to take it on specific days of the week, every few days, on a cycle, or as needed. Once you've chosen the schedule, tap done. Now set the times for this medication. You can specify how many tablets you'll be taking and adjust the times by tapping the time button. If you need to take it more than once a day, tap add a time to include additional reminders. When you're happy with the schedule, tap next. The app then lets you customize the appearance of the medication, such as the shape and color of the tablet. Again, this step is optional, so you can skip it if it isn't relevant. Otherwise, choose the shape, tap next, and select the colors that match the medication to make it easier to identify. Tap next again. You'll then see a summary page where you can review all the details that you've entered. If needed, you can add notes here, such as instructions from your doctor. Once everything looks good, tap done. Your medication will now be registered on your device and you'll receive reminders to log it at the times that you've set. You can log your medication in two ways, either when a notification pops up or by going into the health app, tapping on medications and using the log button just below the date. Tap the plus icon to indicate whether you've taken or skipped the medication. The redesigned Photos app in iOS 18 has received quite a bit of criticism over the past six months, and a lot of it is probably deserved. But one new feature that I think is genuinely great is the ability to automatically categorize your receipts. Previously, if you wanted to organize receipts, you'd either have to tag them manually or export them to another app like Notes. 
In iOS 18, your iPhone automatically recognizes and categorizes receipts without any effort on your part, and you can easily find them in a dedicated folder. Here's how to do it. Open the Photos app and scroll down until you see the Utilities section. If you don't see this, scroll all the way to the bottom of the Photos app, tap Customize and Reorder, and make sure that Utilities is enabled. Once you're in Utilities, provided you've got receipts saved in your Photos app, you'll see a Receipts category with a number indicating how many there are. Tap on this and all your receipt photos will be grouped together. Your phone also does this for QR codes and documents containing handwriting, making it much easier to organize and find specific types of content. As long as you're in a region where this feature is supported and your iPhone can run iOS 18, there's a feature in the phone app that allows you to record phone conversations. When you're on a call, you'll notice an icon in the upper left corner that looks like an audio waveform with a record button. Tap on this and a notification will play to everyone on the call, letting them know that the conversation is about to be recorded. Once the recording starts, you'll see a small recording icon on the screen. You can stop the recording at any time by pressing the stop button or simply end the call and the recording will stop automatically. After the call, a transcript of the recording will be saved in a dedicated call recordings folder in the notes app. You can tap into this folder to view the recording in a small preview box Tap the play button to listen to the audio or tap the speech bubble icon in the bottom left corner to view the full transcript of the call. One common misconception about this feature is that it's exclusive to Apple Intelligence, but that's not the case. The feature that is exclusive to Apple Intelligence is the summary feature. If your device supports Apple Intelligence, you'll see a summary button at the top of the screen after the call. Tapping this will generate an AI powered summary of the conversation. If you're looking to free up storage on your iPhone, one of the best places to start is by deleting apps that you never use. There are a couple of ways to do this. The slower, more laborious way is to go to your app library, tap the app library search bar at the top and scroll through the alphabetized list of apps to figure out which ones you no longer use. But there is a much quicker way. Go to settings, then general and tap on iPhone storage. Once you're there, scroll down to the list of apps and tap on the drop down menu that says size. Change this to last used date. This will reorganize the list so that the apps that you've used most recently are at the top. To find the apps that you haven't used in weeks or even months, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list. You might also need to tap show all to see everything. As you scroll down, you might find apps for products that you no longer own, old bank card apps or things that you simply haven't touched in ages. While these apps might not take up much space individually, they can still add up to a significant amount of unnecessary storage use. When you find an app that you no longer want, just swipe from right to left and tap delete to remove it from your device. This next tip is exclusive to iCloud Plus subscribers, but I'm including it because there are more iCloud Plus users out there than you might think. In fact, if you've purchased additional monthly storage from Apple, even the cheapest plan at 99 pence a month for 50 gigabytes, you already have access to iCloud Plus features. And one of these features is called Hide My Email. So Hide My Email allows you to create a random email address that you can use to register with websites. You can access this feature by selecting the Hide My Email option when you're prompted during registration on a site or by going to settings, tapping on your user ID at the top, choosing iCloud, scrolling down to the iCloud Plus features section and tapping Hide My Email. Once you're in the Hide My Email section, tap Create New Address. A random email address will be generated for you and you can label it with the name of the site or service that you're signing up for. When you've done this, press next in the upper right corner and your email address will be created. You can then long press on the email address to copy it and use it to sign up for the site or service as normal. The beauty of this feature is that if at any point in the future you decide that you no longer want to receive emails from that site, it's incredibly easy to stop them. Just go back to the hide my email section in your settings, locate the email address in question and tap on it. You'll see a checkbox labeled forward to, which shows the emails being sent to that hide my email address are being forwarded to your main iCloud email. Simply switch this off and you'll stop receiving emails from that service in your inbox. It's a much quicker and easier way to unsubscribe from something that you no longer want. So there you go, 10 truly useful tips and tricks for the iPhone. How many did you know? And were there any tips that you thought should have been here instead? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. 
See you on the next video.